So I had an H100i V2, which is a refurbished unit, on my test bench a while back. But then it kind of died on me. So I decided that I should RMA it and for the time being, so that I can still use my test bench, I decided to buy a Noctua L9i because it could also work as a future cooler for some small form factor build that I will be planning to build in the f near future. So I thought it might be a good investment anyway, it might be just like a backup cooler. So yeah, I bought that cooler and I decided to test it out on my 4790K and I decided to test it out even with an overclock. And mind you, this is a deleted 4790K, so it does run a bit cooler than the stock uh, Intel Tim 4790K. So I wanted to see how far I could push it on my 4790K with just an L9i, which is a really low profile, you know, small form factor built CPU cooler. So yeah, I decided to also make a review out of it. So yeah, here it is. Uh, let's take a look at the Noctua L9i cooler itself, the NH-L9i. So I hope you enjoyed that, and now let's take a look at the box itself. So it's a typical Noctua box with a brown accent and also some white spaces on it and obviously a lot of information on the back with multiple languages and on one side you get some features that they list on that side and on the other side you get some specifications and also what's included inside the box and obviously the 6 year warranty. And once you open the box itself, you'll immediately be greeted by everything. And of course there's the cooler itself in the middle of a foam piece that's well packed. And you'll also get a case badge which is made out of metal and that's very nice I think compared to other coolers. And you also get a low noise adapter and the mounting screws themselves. Another thing that you also get is obviously the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste which is very nice since most coolers include a very small amount of paste. And you'll also get this letter which is, you know, kind of a nice touch. And the last thing you get is some extra screws for mounting a thicker fan on it. Once you take out everything, there's really nothing left inside the box except for the cooler. And the cooler itself is also extremely thin and small as you can see. The heatsink itself is barely even any thicker than the fan that's sitting on top of it, which is a Noctua NF-A9X14 fan, which is a low profile fan that has all the Noctua's usual technologies built into it, like the step frame and the air acceleration channel on the blades. And for the build quality itself, it's obviously very noctual like it's very high build quality. Everything's super shiny and polished to a nice touch. Even the fan is super high quality. You can feel that plastic is really rigid and the base itself is also extremely shiny. So the mounting system that it comes with is obviously the Intel LGA 115X mounting system, but you can buy a Ryzen kit if you want to. And the mounting is pretty simple. You just screw it in from the back. There's nothing to explain. And here it is mounted to my test bench motherboard, which is an ASUS Maximus 7 Gene, on top of a 4790K. And it looks extremely tiny, as it is also extremely short. As you can see, it's also shorter than my Corsair Vengeance Pro DDR3 RAM kits. Once I installed it back on my test bench, we can start the test. And this time I kind of did it the other way around in that I tried to put the highest overclock that I thought it could sustain. At first I tried 4.5 GHz at 1.15 volts, but that's obviously still too hot as it even throttled under load. And also at 4.4 GHz at 1.1 volts, it was still a little bit too hot for my liking. Even though it doesn't throttle, it still gets to almost 100 degrees. 
So I tried 4.3 GHz at 1.05 volts, and that's where I found stability and also reasonable temperatures. So I decided to use that setting for this cooler for the time being. And I find that quite respectable, as this cooler is really tiny and it's also not in the best case scenario. As you can see, it's kind of blocked off on the sides by the VRM heat sinks and also the RAM sticks. So it kind of recirculates its own hot air, so that's not really the best scenario for it. And I don't have any kind of airflow over the motherboard area either, so that doesn't help either. Because the VRM is outputting some heat as well. But it did quite well, and to my surprise, it also is quite a quiet cooler. I mean, compared to the Cryorig C7 cooler that I saw online, like the noise testing, this is seemed this cooler seems to be way quieter, as it only makes a slight whooshing sound, and on idle is pretty much dead silent. So that's probably about it for this cooler. Overall, I'm quite impressed by the build quality first and foremost. Like all Nacho products, it just, you know, it feels like quality. All the whole heatsink is solid. And also the performance is actually not bad at all. It kind of surprised me for, you know, given how small it is and you know how weak a freaking tiny CPU cooler should be, but it kind of does let you overclock a little bit on the 4780K at least with it being deleted, even though it's only rated for like 95 watts, I think. Or was it 65 watts? Well, it's rated for a really low wattage, so way lower than what my overclock 4790K actually pulls. But it managed to cool it off uh, pretty well. Although it didn't reach the same overclock as my H100i, which is 4.8 gigahertz, and even now 4.9 gigahertz, but you know, it's a tiny cooler. And yeah, I think that's a pretty good result, especially as it's also quite a quiet cooler, like all Noctua products. But yeah, overall I'm quite impressed with this product, the Noctua NH-L9i. And that's it for this video, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, please leave a like, and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.